spring officially began on the weekend and it's finally beginning to feel like the winter is over. From posts that I have seen on social media, I know that I'm not the only one to be taking particular delight and comfort this year in the way the earth is bursting into life all around us. The world news is completely taken up with the COVID-19 pandemic, which is totally understandable. It is so easy to allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by a state of anxiety, fear, gloom, even panic. And I confess I've been there several times in the past week. But look out of the window. Better still, within the limits of the government's instructions, get outdoors. In the words of Jesus, look at the flowers. They are opening all around us in the warmth of the sun. Look at the birds. They're busy choosing mates and getting ready to build their nests and raise a new brood of young. Listen to them as they merrily sing their praises to God and carry on. Look at the bees buzzing happily around the spring flowers. I haven't seen my first butterfly yet, but I'm sure it won't be long. This time of year always cheers the heart. But this year there's an added reason why considering nature helps us to be calm. The birds, the flowers, the bees, the butterflies are utterly unconcerned about coronavirus. Their life goes on as it does every year, responding to the changing of the season, the turning of the world. And this is no accident. After Noah left the ark, he offered God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we read God's response in Genesis chapter 8, verses 21 and 22. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though the inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. I'm not understating the gravity of the current pandemic, but far reaching as it is, God is greater and God's promises are steadfast whatever may be happening on the world stage. His purposes prevail, his kingdom endures, his love remains totally changeless and unshakable. We must be informed, yes, we must behave wisely and responsibly, of course. But we don't need to allow ourselves to be imprisoned in the gloomy world of fear and despair. Let's keep looking out of the window and then looking beyond that to the one who made it all and the one who upholds it all. That same creator God is our loving father. He knows what we need before we ask him. Let us keep our eyes on him, the one who remains faithful, even during these very uncertain times. In our family church on Sunday morning, we sang the original version of My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. The hymn has a verse which is omitted in the modern rendition and I'd forgotten it. It goes like this. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the o'erwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let's pray. Father, at this time of uncertainty, we thank you that you are a covenant-keeping God. Forgive us for those times when we have put our trust in other things, when we have assumed control of our lives and certainty about our futures. As those sources of security are now stripped away, may we look again to you, our rock our Saviour, our Redeemer. We thank you for your faithfulness to us through all the ups and downs of life. We thank you for the world you have created, which speaks to us of your infinite power and goodness and your unfailing loving care. May we, your children, trust that as you provide for the flowers and the birds, you will provide for us whom you have chosen and redeemed. Amen.